Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Upgrading your weapon is extremely important to deal more damage. Crazy part, though, is that you can extremely early get a somber smithing stone weapon. For me, I used the Halo Scythe on my last build. Up to plus nine, very early, very easy. I've been at Godfrey already with a plus five one, and I could have even had plus six there and clapped his cheeks tremendously hard. You can straight up from the beginning, as soon as you get your mount, start collecting these because the summer smithing stones are just lying around and waiting to be farmed heads up for anyone that actually has played the game and is always looking for smithing stone locations on the map they are very easy to spawn the mines in every region that contains smithing stone and somber smithing stones in this video we're going to be going through all the somber smithing stone locations that you can easily reach straight up on the beginning these are the mines i'm looking telling you so when you zoom out every time this red hole indicates a mine and they're spread throughout all the maps and these mines have rise levels of smithing stones in them for the first somber smithing stone we don't actually have to go into any of these mines though you can start straight up at limgrave and just right down the road south and at the end of the bridge there is a dead body just sitting on a chair that has your somber smithing stone number one when obviously you still need to find your somber smithing stone weapon but there's a variety of these that you can find early on that are extremely strong i mean there's also the berserk guts colossal sword something like that that you can also sneak off early very on so it's not like it's impossible to get any of these very early i get my halo sign in the first like hour of the game and here boom somber smithing stone level one achieved for for 2459, we just have to go to Khalid. So that's our next stop. We'll go straight into the ruins in the water. You should know this trick by now already if you have watched the one or the other round. That is the Dragonborn Ruins. The Dragonborn Ruins, there is a little teleport chest that just teleports you straight into the Celia Tunnels. Also, FYI, in the Celia Tunnels, you can actually find yourself also Smithing Stones 5. Arriving in the Celia Tunnel, you turn a left. You can pick up a Smithing Stone 5 to just have the potential to upgrade your weapon, at least for one time. Don't get killed by the annoying, absolute annoying insect master doodle dandy. Very important when you get teleported again, you need to rest at a site of grace or you can't teleport again anytime soon. So, that's kind of like the way it is. You just need to rest. Don't worry. Dunzo. And now there is a bunch of smithing stones you can really pick up fast and early. So, here's, by the way, also close by the spot where you farm the Halo Scythe if you're planning to go for the Reaper of Faith build. But for now, we have two goals. We want to get up to the west. Because in the west, there's the Dragon Burrow teleport point. That can always bring us back. But we also would like to pick up our next Sombre Smithing Stone already. So here are the ruins for the meteorite stuff that you might have known or might have been at already. And you're like, oh yeah, I, I remember this. This is the meteorite stuff. And then you actually turn around where the scarab is and you write up this little crevasse quickly. You see already the purple lights and there's these bomb-like things. It's actually very funny because you can just Run past them all. They're going to explode and kill themselves and give you 23 souls or runes. Why not? So I'm just missing stone five. So we have one and five already. Which means we're essentially just missing two, three, and four. And we already are getting further upgraded. Now, next step is getting out of the Gapadem swamp. So you can actually go to the Dragon Burrow ruins and easily pick up Summer Smithing Stone eight and nine already yes it's quite mental that you get eight and nine this early into the game whereas the other ones we will be having to progress a little bit further on the cool thing is you can pick up all these graces already on the way so it kind of makes your life tremendously easier as always though timestamps in the description below so if you're lacking a certain smithing stone just jump exactly to that smithing stone so now you're running alongside this and your goal is go to the tower. You do see the big tower in the distance. That is essentially what we're looking forward to. If you want to know how much high level these things are, 
Oh, you can kill with four hits. Some other things here, you don't even want to look in the eye because they're going to be like absolutely hating on you. Especially ignore the doggies. The doggies should one hit you. The birdies should one hit you. I mean, everything kind of one hits you here, right? And everything kind of hates you. It's the most important part. This round always takes a bit. And you get to like make sure that you aim for the dead dragon that's lying there. Again, tower on the right. You can go in here and you can snack off some golden runes if you feel like. This is always good in the beginning because you easily get some runes for upgrades. Then you're aiming for the little gap where you can actually jump over. And now we get Grail's uh, Dragon Burrow. You can easily snatch this Grace. And here comes uh, the Crazy Pod. You see the light in the distance? That is your friend. The little... Little Scarab. And as you see, it kind of resists getting killed. So this, this one, obviously, you're not really strong yet against. But you can, you can kill it very easily before, you know, it goes anywhere. Because it doesn't really count as an opponent, so you have unlimited. Oh, it explodes, by the way. So that's Summer Smithing Stone Aid. So since no opponent is closed, you have unlimited stamina. Then you're just running down, okay? Ignore the Dragoons. And yes, there's the big Dragoon that we could actually spam try to kill for 100k plus runes straight away. But I always feel like doing that one correct than actually cheesing it. Also, while you're here, you could be getting Radagon's Star Seal, Source Seal. So here, Dragon Wound, Somber Smithing Stone 9, Materia Leave, and Runar. So we're brand new into the game, barely started, and we have 1, 5, 8, and 9. And then after getting 9, you port back to the Ionia Swamp Shore. Heading west, heading west, heading west, heading west. Past the ruins, past the doggies, past everyone. It's quite a ride. Until you reach the grace here. That would be the Callum Ruin Grace. Also, at the Callum Ruin Grace, there is this broken down wagon. Where you can easily get yourself... A great sword. Straight on if you want to play a great sword. It's just waiting there for you. Then from the ruins, you're heading down south. You see these giant wide blocky hills. That's what we're aiming for. Ignore the birds. Make a wide, wide berth around them. Really don't want to attract the anger of one of these birds. And you're looking for this root here is this rune has that scarab next to it right can do it with a bow and arrow and also just get your sword out again and write it down it dies a bit faster than the eight one and that's Somber Smithing Stone 4. So that that's it. We're in a couple of minutes. Somber Smithing Stone 4 achieved. And again, if you're right over here, there is more graves that you might want to plunder or some early runes. I mean, you could you could just boost, you know, your level very sneakily. These grave positions are always very useful. I mean, that, that's like a thousand runes plus that you just easily get in the very beginning. For the Somber Smithing Stone 2, we need to write to the south and it's roughly there. So we're taking our mount and it's going all the way down south. You know the way, you just follow the road essentially until you have to cross the big bridge and then you reach the Western Peninsula. And as you get to the Western Peninsula, it is down south further. Continuing our journey. 
southward and onward and we're going to be aiming for the jellyfish next to the castle that might tell the one or the other of you something also don't forget these you know wagons always have some goodies for you hidden smithing stone too if you're upgrading a normal weapon but i have to admit that usually i always upgrade somber smithing stone weapons because normal weapons it's just really really pain so if you have the choice to snatch yourself an early somber smithing stone weapon you know what to do get it upgraded so running further down south there's the castle so again just you know very single-minded path forward we're at the weeping peninsula and now we turn left so that guy's shooting us and we turn left you see the gap in the woods don't play with swamp zombies no one wants to play with swamp zombies and we're heading straight for the beach on the beach you can already see the jellyfish hello they're red so that means they're mean summer smithing stone too now for the next step you don't actually have to do market the film you can just run past Stormvale Castle. And that's very cool. So we have one, two, four, five, eight, and nine already. We're intending to mission just three, six, and seven. That's nothing, to be honest. So you just go past the whole castle. Yeah, not even Margaret. If you have problems killing Margaret the Fell, no problem. Just go past him, past Godfrey, past him, past all of them. Just with the little path you have here. And then you can actually easily pick up three, six, seven. And you would then be able to instantly get a weapon with up to plus nine. The only thing that would hold you away from getting that is the runes <laughs> because it's quite expensive rune wise to actually upgrade that so you do then have the stones and you can then upgrade your weapon as fast as or as far as possible as it is for you but already having the weapon then four or five you just kill one two bosses easily because you're doing immense damage outputs and then you upgrade it gradually super fast further that should easily be possible. I mean, like, you could you could be so high level for Godfrey already, it's insane. I mean, every single burrow boss, like, from all the tiny mini dungeons, so all the optional side bosses, they're just going to fall to you. Like, there's no tomorrow. For Somber Smithing Stone 3, it's actually very simple. You're looking at the tower there. Big divine tower, tiny divine tower next to it. And that's what you're going to be essentially heading for straight away. So no, no dilly dally, no hizzle hassle, no bingo bongo. We're straight up just pointing our character to the right through the swamps and the waters. And your goal is it to end at the base of the tower. Because at the base of the tower, there's a teardrop scarab waiting for you. Kind of crazy to put all of this together, right? So again, we're running for the... And yes, after killing Margaret, you're actually strong enough. Uh, but obviously, you didn't kill Margaret. I just, you know, tried him. Because I thought you actually had to kill him. But I forget you could actually bypass him. That simple. You can also just go AFK here, by the way. And these guys are essentially farming for you. Pick up the runes here. That's very good. Again, this is a rune 3. That's a rune 6. That's like another 1,000 plus runes that you might want to have for upgrading your weapon. Because again, you, you need to upgrade your weapon, which costs runes. So, might as well get that done. Also, when you're riding this route here, you're going to get the one important grace. That's the learner of the lakes right in the freaking middle grace. From this grace, straight up heading northbound. Ignore the wolfies, ignore the doggies, ignore the everythingsies. You see on your right, uh, the gigantic tower. And again, your goal is to end at the base of the tower. 
If you're using incantations and you want to have lightning magic, kill this guy. Obviously, there's no way to cheese this. And I'm always looking for ways to cheese, you know, <laughs> movement. Because I'm too comfortable to run there. But you just very simple. Go further. Jump over the tibbity tobbity here. And then we can make our way just down. Important there, you can fall. So <laughs> make sure to nod because it's going to make you absolutely rationally unhappy if you fall down here and you're just essentially wrapping yourself to the rind you do have the Ainsel river too this is actually very important so next to you is the Ainsel river so if you're going for ghost glove word grave glove worth and all that stuff early uh the Ainsel river i think has one two three all for for grave glove worth so you could easily get your spirits upgraded there too by going down in the Intel River and just collecting that. Also, there's a lot of ambient runes. They're just lying around essentially. The, the amount of runes you can get super easy is like absolutely crazy. And as you arrive at the tower, you're heading to the Rhine and there's this little overhang. And this is where our friend is. The teardrop scarab we've been looking for. Boom. Level 3. It was the fastest level 3 I could think about. So you're running past the academy to quickly snatch your glintstone key. Which is located behind the big glintstone dragon. So just straight up past it. Don't dilly dally, don't hissle hassle. We, we don't want to. We don't want to play with this one, anyways. Thank you for your Academy Glintstone key. You're very appreciated. Riding straight past that little monster. To activate the grace up here. Again, all these graces, they, they'll thank you later. Head back to the Learning of the Lakes teleporter that we unlocked earlier. And then you're actually going to have to backtrack a little bit. So we're going to the left. Because instead of now running into the academy. Which you which you don't actually have to. like Because it's a very annoying way. There's a bunch of soldiers in front. And they're going to be just very cheesy. You actually go back to the Laskia ruins. You might have already unlocked that teleport spot. I didn't do that because I've been like lazy, you know. I've been just flying through for the sake of the guy. So I missed that teleporter. But you're essentially just straight up heading down south where you essentially came from. Until you're hitting the last year ruins. And then you just straight up take the teleporter. Be bye to everyone. <laughs> Last year Ruins is very distinguishable by these guys with their belts. And boom, you end up learning of the lakes, Ryu Lucaria Academy straight away. You can activate the grace so you're actually able to get in there. And now if you don't want to be bothered finding the one Summer Smithing Stone 3 early like I did, you could also find a Summer Smithing Stone 3 here, right behind the first altar in the first room that you're entering. So can save that step if you want to but i prefer to do it there because uh, there's actually a good grace that you would like to activate so i, I kind of you know wanted to just have these graces for the further ongoing of the game now you're in the academy and the trick here is to make your way fast through like you're not interested in actually fighting any of the respective gentlemen They're all also very annoying. Good thing when you're opening doors, they can't kill you, huh? Be a shame if they could. When the timing goes unfortunate for you, they might actually murder you. And yes, behind that altar here, if you're running through, Summer Smithing Stone 3. Didn't want to risk death now for that. Activate the grace. And 
And here comes the cheesy part that Mr. Mendo has shown me. Very appreciated again. Check out his YouTube channel. You essentially make your way down here as always. Ignore all these gentlemen. Don't really interact with anyone. Take care that the zomber dombers don't clippity clappity you. Hold yourself to the right so you don't get zoomed by that one guy. And you see the giant turning wheel, right? That's what we're interested in. I mean, you can pick up the magic grease. I've heard you have some magic grease with you. Make your way past these gentlemen. Almost get killed because you're a bot. And then, very important, you're going on the platform. So you see the, the platform here. You're on these. And our goal is to essentially end down. Okay, so we want to go down. You go all the way up. Jump over. Run to the other side. Kill this gentleman. Wait for the next platform. And the tricky part now is... As you're down here... Go, 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 all the way, 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 way down, da, 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 down. And in case you didn't know, you can actually go all the way down here. <laughs> yes, I know, it's uh, crazy. There is, um, let's call it the boss. All the way at the ground level. So you're going, 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 going. You're slipping. Now, as you arrive at the bottom, you see this devious death machine. And your goal is to actually get grabbed by that. So roll into it. It's grabbing you and you're like, that's very unfortunate. Why would we do this? Interestingly enough. You can teleport it into Volcano Manor. And as you remember, up here is the way to Lord Riker. And this bridge spanning, and up there, is the somber smithing stone waiting for you already. Now, we would just have to get somehow down here to, you know, these roofs and everything to find six and seven. And we're already done. The trick is to fall off this wall without killing yourself. So you do see these little protrusions and everything. Uh, you can stand here. Like you see, here's the lava lake. Then you have the big outcrops. And then you have this one. And you're going to be essentially trying to get down there without taking the maximum fall damage. Instantly drink your drink. Roll over, donezo. Now step number one. Jump over those annoying snails. As you're running now up the stairs. Ignore the snake. Jump over. Follow the roofs left and push to the west. And then on the following roof here, you'll find plus six. And now we're only missing plus seven and plus seven has a last tricky little jump for you. So you essentially return to where you've come from and push yourself straight into this cage. Bye snake overlord. Pleasure to see you. Now straight up run past this gentleman. Because this gentleman will absolutely obliterate you and your life. Do not go in there if you cherish your life. And activate the bridge. As you activate the bridge, you run so over. Get on this little noggin. Get on this little noggin to jump over here. Get all the way on the chain and you're looking for that item. 
It's a bit of a tricky jump. Showing you the fails, you know? Even this part here is already a little bit tricky, but you get it. Then you jump up, jump over, get the item, fall down, and run away screaming like there's no tomorrow. Now, after getting seven, if you die, you get teleported back to the start. Because essentially, in order to leave this place, you will have to find a grace. So you get teleported back where your bad brethren are. And now you could have also made your way to Volcano Manor straight away. Uh, but I essentially died, so I'll show you the route how you can actually get out of this mess. Because, well, you can't, frankly spoken, get out of this mess if you haven't touched a grace yet. So, you need to touch Grace to make your way out. So, you're going past all these little snails in the fire caves. Further down. Don't miss, you know, it's, it's, it would be annoying if you miss one of these. Pay attention to where you're jumping. Don't get eaten by the poo. I'm skipping these intentionally now, running past, so you can activate the grace. As you have this grace activated, you could discover here more if you feel like it. Or you could just teleport yourself out to the round table hold. And if you do have your somber smithing stone weapon of choice already, I mean, there's a couple to get early. If you play the Reaper of Faith build, you now have the opportunity to upgrade it to plus nine straight away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And yes, the plus 10, there's also a way to get that early. But the reality is that between plus 9 and plus 10 is not much a big difference. And with plus 9 right now, straight away, you're just going to be shredding everything into pieces. Because plus 9 also increases the scaling of your weapon. So depending on what you're going to be choosing, you can actually get the weapon instantly to an S or an A scaling on strength, for example. So get your weapon of choice early, upgrade it, go out there and absolutely demolish everything in existence enjoy your playthrough and well you could do this for every playthrough very simple idea with a samurai i think with a mage it might actually be simpler because with a mage you could get the meteorite stuff and just blast through any kind of opposition but you don't really need to kill a single opponent you've seen that in the whole guide and you you have plus nine plus nine a weapon plus nine you, you want to go to margaret the fell now you completely dominate him I hope this guide helped you. I hope you enjoy this, how you get OP early, how you can get really strong early so you can enjoy your playthrough as a story playthrough, essentially. Wish you a fantastic good day, night, evening. Don't forget to subscribe to find your way back for more. And if you want to see more videos, just drop in the comments below what you would like to have covered. Have a fantastic one. See you soon again.